Good morning and happy Sunday. Today is actually Saturday. Um, we have a front that's just getting ready to pass over us, so I'm still out here in my short sleeve t-shirt. Uh, probably be a little bit cooler after the front passes, but you can hear all the wind and see all the bamboo rustling around. Makes for a nice day. So let's start with the boots, which we left off with last week. So what happened was when I went ahead and filled the boots up with water and to let them sit, um, I noticed that the red dye in the boots started to run onto the concrete. So um, as I'm giving them as a gift, I wanted to make sure to try to remedy that somehow. Um, they actually then did get left out in two days worth of thunderstorms where we got a lot of inches of rain. Um, and this is sort of what they kind of left behind there. The mark, you can see sort of the redness. Um, so what I did was I picked up this little tray, which is really just one of those Publix tray things from Goodwill for like 25 cents. And I got these little guys here for 25 cents each at Goodwill. And I just thought that that's perfect. Now you can kind of fill them up. The water will catch into the pan. It won't run onto the concrete. And yeah, the flowers are taking really well. I'm going to add a little bit more dirt to them up at the top. Um, yeah, and then they'll be ready to go. So I was really happy with the, how that all turned out. And this is kind of cute. The little wood floor mat. Yeah, so that's the boots. That was the lesson that we learned. The last time I did that, I used combat boots. And I don't remember having that same problem. So I'll keep that in mind. Alright, so let's see what this says. This is called a Strawberry Vertical Garden. Directive, delicious, and no garden needed. Vertical gardens will turn any sunny wall into a place to grow sweet-tasting strawberries. Okay, so as I mentioned, I got these through a school fundraiser years and years ago. So I have no idea what's going to be in this. It does say includes one hanging bag and ten strawberry plants. So... I have no idea what I'm going to find right now. Let's see. Well, here's the hanging bag. Here's some holes in the hanging bag. And it's like a bird's nest. Ah! Hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking that's not going to really do anything. Got a better idea for this guy. But we take this pot right here, put a little soil in it, and we're just gonna dump everything that was in this bag in here. Ooh. That. Yeah, so I just laid that in there. I'll put a little dirt on top. Right, so I'm just going to put some water in here and water this. Alright, so I actually have three of these. Tomato Vertical Garden. Decorative, delicious, and no garden needed. Vertical gardens will turn any sunny wall into a place to grow tasty tomatoes. This one says includes one hanging bag and cherry tomato seeds. So... Oh, and this one actually has instructions in it, too. That was the other thing. It didn't have any instructions, so. You know, when you're trying to make something easy for people that don't garden, instructions are always a good thing. So this one says, start your seeds about six to eight weeks before the last anticipated frost in your area. Well, we live in South Florida. It is December 9th, and it is probably about 85, 90 degrees outside, so we're not going to have to worry about that. Keep seedlings moist and warm, but not wet at all times. Use a liquid plant fertilizer after sprouts are about one inch tall, diluted to half strength. Fill the bag with soil. When your starter plants are one to two inches tall and have formed a good root system, lay the bag flat with the whole side up. Completely fill the bag with a moist soil mix, which you can purchase at your local gardener. Well, we have that. Insert the plants gently into the starter pots or flats, enough to fill the round. Da, 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 da. Okay, so that seems all self-explanatory. So the key is here, we have to start, uh, we have to start the seeds. Let's see, where's the, 
Where are the seeds? Here's the nice lovely bag again. And here are our seeds. Yeah, they give you just about enough seeds for each hole. Uh, a couple extra. Okay, so I think the thing to do is to open all three of these up and start them all and hope that we get enough to do one bag with. What do you think? Okay, so since the theme of today happens to be dragging stuff out of the closet and using, I have this, which you can tell just by how dirty it is. It's been sitting around a while. And so this is a tomato and vegetable greenhouse, they call it. And, um... Yeah, so we're going to use this to try to start those tomato seeds. Expand the jiffy petal petals by gradually adding approximately a half a cup of warm water per pellet. Gently pull back the netting on top of the pellets, fluff, and level surface peat. So two to three seeds per pellet, cover lightly with peat. Place dome on tray. Keep in a warm location away from direct sun. Oh, I see. It said a half a cup per or just seven cups for the whole thing because, uh, yeah, it just kind of runs over on top. It doesn't do one at a time. So that was, so we'll do this real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. So yeah, they're just kind of off. Let's see. Yeah, these things are so old, I assume they'll still work. I mean, why wouldn't they? They're just bouncing around. Okay, so you can see these guys are starting to puff. I'm going to put those aside and let those guys finish up. And look at some of the other fun things we got here. I've got this one here that says... <gasps> And again, I may have ordered these all at the same time, but they've definitely been sitting around for years. My first garden flower seed kit. So this one's really cute. It's got um, all these flowers that you see here. So that's cute. And we got this one here, which I thought was cute. This one's my first garden pizza seed kit. So it has all these things here. Yeah, so why don't we take a look and see what they look like inside. like the instructions so place the soil wafer in a large bowl adding a half a cup of warm water allowed to soak and expand when completely expanded remove netting and fluff with a fork if you find dry spots sprinkle them with water and keep fluffing until the soil is thoroughly moistened but not soaked place the egg carton on a waterproof tray or saucer transfer most of the soil evenly into the six cells of eggs place two to three seeds into each of the egg cells and the balance of the soil to cover it Right, so that seems pretty self-explanatory. October is National Pizza Month. Over 5 billion pizzas are sold worldwide each year. World's largest pizza, Atavia, was baked in Italy, weighing in at 51,257 pounds in the setting of the new world record for the largest round pizza in 2013. Pepperoni is the most popular pizza topping in America, and America eat about 100 acres of pizza every day and since this is probably going to be the same thing i'm going to go ahead and open this one up too did it give me any fun facts about flowers did you know we use sunflower seeds to make oil bird seed and for snacking they have lots of calcium and 11 other important minerals one sunflower can have up to 2,000 seeds. The most distinguishing feature of the sunflower is that its flowering head attracts the sun's movement. This kind of phenomenon is known as heliotropism. Yeah, so cool. Okay, so here we are. It's Monday. I went ahead and let these things soak overnight. And um, as you can see, they soaked up most of the water. There's a little bit of water in the bottom. It says to drain the extra water, but there's so little. I'm gonna just go ahead and leave that there to keep everything moist. And I, the two that came with the egg cartons, we dumped in here and I filled the egg cartons like it says. And it says to put uh, two or three seeds in each one. And then it says to put it in the window. So I'm assuming they want you to take these tops off, obviously. So I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, then the instruction says that after they grow to about 
four inches to remove the healthiest plant or to remove the ones that aren't the healthiest plant. And then to either just plant the whole egg carton in a pot or cut it up into sections and plant it in a pot. So we'll see how it goes from there. To me, it just seems easier just to pull the plant out and put it in your separate areas. If you put them like that together, it seems like it doesn't give you very much space for the stuff to grow. But we'll come across that when we actually get something to sprout, if we actually get something to sprout. But I wanted to do it this way because it was a little kit and I wanted to show you um, the practicality of whether it really, you know, worked or not. And this is what was left over, so it had quite a bit of extra there. Um, yeah, so now I'm gonna pull these little guys things up and then um, start sticking some seeds in them. it's Monday so we'll take a look on Saturday and see if we see anything I'll keep an eye on and make sure they stay moist in the meantime and then so that brings us to the vertical towers that we were working on these were the egg crate cartons I have not seen anything break through the soil there these guys here got ants in them, so I put a little ant bait. Well, I, mean, I got a little carried away with the ant bait. But we put some ant bait in there. Um, but I did just see this morning, look at this little guy. There's a little green thing there. Oh, you know, look, looks like another little tiny. Yeah, so that's fun. So by next Sunday, I should have more to show you on those. And uh, these were the tomatoes. That's right. These were just the tomatoes. These were the ones that was like the, what did we have? We had for the pizza, we had basil, and we had peppers and tomatoes. That's how I did that. Yeah, so we'll take a look at that. Now, of course, nothing's happening with the, the strawberry plant, and we really don't expect it to, do we? So it's just sitting there. But let's take a look at the other plants while we're here. Here is the potato plants. And they continue to get bigger and stronger. I think this one right here was just a little guy last week. And look how big it's already gotten this week. So we'll keep an eye on these two and see how big they get by next week. But yeah, I think we're definitely going to have some potatoes. So I'm really excited about that. Especially since there's a huge potato shortage now, you know. And here is the carrots. And they're really nice and strong. I haven't had to water them because of that huge storm that we had come through and just dump inches and inches of rain. So they're standing up nice and tall. This is the, the cabbage. Oh, little lizard. Hi, little lizard. Bye, little lizard. And uh, yeah, so this is the cabbage. And here, finally, my kale is starting to take off a little bit. It does take a long time to grow, it seems like. It seems like when I was just growing the regular lettuce, it grew a lot faster. So this was what we thought was a banana pepper plant. It's just never changed size since I said that, so I'm not quite sure. But what I had done was I went ahead and planted the extra pepper seeds that I had left over uh, from that kit in there, so we may get some more sweet peppers popping up. And the celery's getting a little stronger. Not strong enough to pick yet, but we're getting there. Mr. Eggplant, no idea what Mr. Eggplant's gonna do. Doesn't seem to really be getting any taller does keep producing flowers, but then they keep falling off and I don't see anything that, that's coming from the flower. So over here we have the peppers, and I had three big peppers I think last week, so I went ahead and ate two of them. This one here I'm leaving on because it's starting to turn a little yellow, and I'm really curious to see if my green pepper will go from yellow to orange to red, which I think it should. So we're gonna see if that happens. And over here we have our cauliflower which if we look down in here, I think, I think, I think I finally see a little cauliflower plant, can you see it? And um, 
so yeah, so I'm excited about that. And and the broccoli, look at this, guys. <gasps> broccoli! We've got broccoli! Yay, so excited about that. Over here, look at this. Yeah, so I'm really excited to see what those look like next week. Uh, On to my Roma. My Roma tomato is uh, getting bigger, quicker, and we've got flowers. So we're going to have some Roma tomatoes, so that'll be nice. And um, I've definitely been enjoying these sweet tomatoes. They are so cute. I've got so many of them that will be ripening up. And, uh, yeah, so I made a tasty little dinner with some of those last night. I'll go ahead and insert that right here, right now. are nice and strong. Yeah, it's really got some growth coming on there. So the pumpkin pie may have been a failure, but the seeds definitely were not. All right, so while I'm right here, I'll go ahead and show you my tower. My lemon balm is not coming back quicker than I'm using it, and I cannot find any lemon balm now. It's just sort of out of season when winter comes. It does kind of go dormant, and then in the spring it pops all back up again. So. I'm going to plan ahead this spring and just have one big pot of lemon balm and make sure that I um, that I dry some so that I have enough to make it through winter. Rosemary is going off. Does anybody need any rosemary? Because I am going to have to come out here and trim this. It's getting big and long and out of the Mickey shape. Looks like something's eating my basil. But... Um, I did just cut it down and put a bouquet on my table. I think you'll see a picture of that when I sh showed you the food. And, oh, I was here the other day. It's still there. Oh, look, there it is. I'm not sure that's really going to gonna grow. It just keeps getting knocked down. Knocked down, but I get up again. It's never going to get me down. Okay, well, we'll see what happens with that. So you can see how peaceful it can be out here with the rustling of the bamboo in the wind and when it rains it's very nice it started to rain a couple little splatters on the ground and then it went away so i don't know if that was the front and we're not going to get any more rain it doesn't feel any cooler yet but uh you know it's only december 14th so thanks for joining me if you like what's going on, make sure to go down and hit subscribe down at the bottom. I do these updates once a week on Sundays. I usually try to get them up around 10 a.m. Uh, and uh, yeah, I have lots of fun during the week working on it. And I have lots of fun showing it to you on the weekend. So make sure you hit that like button down below, and that bell notification. So just in case you forget what day they go on, you'll get a notification for it. And we'll see you next week.